I'm Kristen. And I'm Christy. Thank you for choosing Tab Performance. This video will help you install your new Tab Performance Auto Tuner. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us by phone, email, or you can download our install PDF at tabperformance.com. Ride every day. Perform every second. Hi, my name is Lane Branson. The great thing about Tab Performance products is they are designed to be easily installed in your garage with just a few basic tools. I'm going to show you all the tools you need and how to install your new auto tuner. I've laid out the tuner, harness, and all the tools you will need close to the area where I'm going to be performing the work. Things you'll need are a pair of wire strippers, dikes, allen wrenches, a 10 millimeter wrench, a half inch wrench, 10 millimeter socket is what I prefer to use. I also use a screw gun with my 4 and 5 millimeter hex heads, and I like an impact for anchoring the airbox at the end. The first step on an F model V rod is to remove the airbox cover. This is achieved by removing 10 bolts with Allen heads. step is removing the airbox cover. We're going to open the seat. We're going to take the quick turn screw, cam screw, remove it, hang that, you're going to set it aside, and then the airbox cover slips back and off. The next step is we need to remove the side radiator cover to gain access to the O2 sensor plug. That's done by removing a 4 millimeter cap screw at the bottom. And then that pops down. You reach your fingers underneath of it, pop it down, and clip it off. The first thing you'll notice about the inside of this F's airbox cover is that I do not have the standard Harley Davidson airbox. This is called a topless mod with an airboxless mod that I've created myself. So imagine if you will the airbox normally sits in here. This sensor sits down inside the airbox near the air intake and then the filter box clips on from the top and you'll need to remove those clips, take the airbox off and essentially I'm going to show you the same thing here. I have to remove this sensor's clip move that out of the way remove the top of the air box and the air box or the air filter now you, as you can see down in here you got your intake air assemblies and what we'll need is the 5 millimeter wrench to remove the 6 bolts that you can see all the way around the inside of here. I've loosened the 5 millimeter bolts, all 6, so that these are now removable. Now you'll need to remove the rubber hose from this side of the PCB. Push it back out through the back side of the air box and then remove it straight up taking the copper tube with. In the next step we're going to lay out the main harness along the length, length of the bike. What I like to do is take the plug and strap it underneath the battery to hold it into place. Then we're going to take the crank position sensor 
and the front O2 sensor, and we're going to feed them underneath the frame rail of the bike. That's the crank sensor, and that's the front O2 sensor. We'll leave these two red wires hanging, and we'll put lay the rest out here. Now, the red and white wire is your battery wire, your hot wire. We're just going to lay that down in the bottom. The red wire solid is your data link connector wire. We're going to feed that through the other side of the bike and hang it out alongside. Then we're going to take the throttle position sensor and we're going to connect it. You unplug the main sensor, put in the jumper for the harness, and then plug the main sensor in to the harness. You're going to perform the same thing with the rear O2 sensor on the back of the bike. Take the clip, unplug it, plug the harness into it, connect the jumper, and that portion's done. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to install the splice on the data link connector. This connector here is the data link connector. It slides up off of the box and, and slips out. You can go ahead and remove the plug out of the data link connector, slide it back out of the way so that you can see all of the wires. Now I have pre-cut the wire loom back so that the wires are exposed. On most V-rods there are four wires on the data link connector of different colors than what you're seeing here. However they all have a gray wire and that's the wire you will be using. We take the splice, take the gray side of the splice, slide it over the wire and then you will install the, the spike onto the threads and twist it until it's snug and that will create a nice tight splice. In the next step we're going to take the data link connector we're going to strip the end of the wire we have a little bit of wire hanging out and we're going to take the quick splice loosen the red end out slide the wire into the red end, push it just past the, the connector on the inside, we're going to go ahead and thread that up until it's tight. I slipped out so we'll just slide it back down in there, hold it in place, and we'll snug it up. And that makes the data link connection right there. In the next step, I'm going to remove the front dust cover plate under the battery. Now this is held in by two rubber grommets and all you got to do is pry it out and that comes loose. We'll go ahead and set that aside for a moment. We're going to take the cables that we drop down through the side of the bike and we're going to feed them behind the rest of the wiring. down through that dust cover. Let them dangle on the side of the bike. Then, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the front O2 sensor, pop that loose, and put the jumper in its place. Then we're going to take the crank position sensor, Disconnect it and put the jumper in its place. In the next step, we're going to remove the dust cover off of the positive side of the battery. We're going to take a large Phillips and we're going to loosen up the battery cable. Go ahead and step that out of the way. 
and we're going to connect the red and white wire and re-anchor the battery cable. Your next step will be to go through the entire harness and zip tie it up however you would like to to make it a nice clean install. You're going to need more than the supplied and you just go right on ahead and begin bunching and zipping them up wherever you need them to be. Now that everything's all zip tied up and your harness is nice and clean on your install, we can undo the main harness plug from underneath the battery strap. You can take your new tuner and plug it right in. It should clip right on, make sure it's a good connection, and then we can tuck it away. Now I like to slip it underneath I've got a couple extra wires in here, so I gotta be gentle. And I'm gonna put it directly underneath the battery strap again. That thing holds stuff in place really well. Right here on top, there's a LED light that you'll wanna have it exposed so that you can see when the bike's running. When it goes green, you're running good. Now that you've got the tuner strapped into place, you're ready to put everything back together on the bike. The very last thing you're going to do before you button the bike completely back up is you're going to make sure that all your sensors are connected, your airbox is put back together, you can leave the top off, and you need to start and run the bike and watch this light on the tuner. The thing you're going to see is it's going to flash steady on and off until it goes into closed loop mode for you're going to wait about a minute to a minute and a half, it could take up to that long. And once it goes solid green, you know that everything's running right, plus the bike will sound just fine. I've already ran mine, so it's automatically going back into closed loop mode, and it's all running good on this one. Now that the tuner is installed and the bike is put back together, you need to take it out for about a 20 minute run to allow the tuner to dial itself in. Enjoy your new Tab Performance Auto Tuner. Ride every day, perform every second.